Episode 5, Energy Cryptocurrency. So there are many cryptocurrencies in existence, but many haven't any substance behind them. And over time, the free market will decide which ones will consolidate. So in this episode, I'm going to share the results of my energy analysis. Here is what we're going to be covering. Energy's background, the need, energy's value proposition, and what I call the seventh feature. It all originates back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin gave birth to Dash, a forked cryptocurrency that incorporated many features that his parent Bitcoin did not have. And from Dash forked Energy, a cryptocurrency designed to become a very powerful smart contract platform. I know this may sound like some sort of cryptocurrencies, Charles Darwin theory of evolution, but you will see the advantage of it in a minute. Now, Energy was conceived in 2017 by blockchain expert Tommy World Power, when one particular but extended problem in the cryptocurrency space specifically caught his attention. Now, Tommy, who was often asked for guidance to get started in cryptocurrencies by his friends and family, he created a YouTube channel with videos to try and help overcome the barriers of entry among his circle, and anyone else for that matter, so they could participate in this new global economy. Interestingly, Due to the quality and the ease of understanding his content, his videos quickly started gaining him significant exposure. Now this sort of bridge position between new adopters and crypto insiders, it gave him a privileged perspective that led him to spot some relevant things in the space. And what he noticed was that something was being very overlooked and that many cryptocurrencies, except for very few, had completely missed, which was the self-funding property. And here's when it starts getting interesting. So from today's world, where the adoption rate is still relatively low, to the future where a cryptocurrency goes mainstream, which is the end goal and what you want as an investor, only resources can really boost the process. And that is the advantage of a self-funding cryptocurrency. So in order for it to be self-funding, it needs two things. It needs the ability to take decisions as a decentralized project, and it needs funding. But how? So to understand this, let's go back to Bitcoin. Now imagine the color of the Bitcoin logo wanted to be changed by part of the community. Well, this would be a problem in itself because it's decentralized and there's no boss or CEO to decide anything. And if an idea were to be submitted, taking any kind of decision would almost be impossible. Not even technical improvements could be carried out, so forget about logo issues. So Dash cryptocurrency came up with a very interesting innovation the first effective decentralized governance system. Participants could vote on things. Fortunately, one of the advantages to a blockchain-based governance system is that voting results are transparent and open to the public, and anyone can easily see the results. So with such a structure, big ideas can come out, and the swarm of intelligence can be amazing, but we still need to solve the second issue, and that's funding them. So how will we do this? Well, remember miners mined the coins into existence? Well, in the Dash ecosystem, they said, why don't we allocate just 10% of the new coins to a treasury from where we can get funds to pay for the future expenses that we might have, such as paying for code programmers to develop new things or paying for the cost of organizing meetups for the community or whatever we might find necessary for the cryptocurrency. Now, this budget system would give us an advantage over other previous cryptocurrencies, which developments are done by people working for free or eventually receiving tips. And this is how one of the first relevant applications, its treasury system, was born. Now, no one in particular has private access to the treasury. If a submitted idea has enough yes votes by its participants, it automatically releases the requested funds. This system made Dash a self-funding cryptocurrency. Amazing, right? Now, this solved the two problems. They could take decisions on ideas as a community, and they could also fund them. It definitely is amazing. However, they designed this great thing to only allocate 10% of the coins mined, and that is pretty low. It was mainly initially conceived to fund the programmers, and therefore, less ability to have things like R&D or marketing, for instance. And in some cases, they would literally burn the coins for absence of its submitted ideas to make them more scarce and ending up with even less resources. Now, I'm sorry I took so long to explain this background part, but it is necessary because you are now about to see how energy enters the picture in a very dominant way. Now, before expanding on that, which is the most exciting part, let's see what features or genetic quality energy benefits from so we make some fundamental analysis before we address its special genes. Now, the first feature is its scalability. This means how can a cryptocurrency handle growth? If a cryptocurrency starts being used by millions of people per minute tomorrow, can it support that traffic? The answer is that many cryptos can't. Their architecture hasn't been designed with such a success in mind, unfortunately. 
You can imagine it like a car traffic congestion. When too much traffic occurs, the roads get congested. The same thing happens, the blockchain gets saturated and the transactions get in sort of a queue. And that can take a long time until finally the transactions are complete. So as of today, this is a major problem. Energy does not have this disadvantage, however. It uses a protocol that allows it to adapt to its current traffic demand. Now the second feature is the low fees. Cryptocurrency's fees can in some cases be pretty high. Crypto started having the advantage of being cheaper than banks, however, with their rise in usage and their traffic congestion, the fees started getting up to almost $30 per transaction in the case of Bitcoin, for instance. Imagine buying a $2 coffee and paying $30 for the transaction, that's not going to happen. Now, energy does not suffer from this issue either. Fees are minuscule and will remain this way thanks to its transactions engineering, which is more cost efficient. Now, the third feature is instant pay. The speed of the transactions is an issue too. Even with no traffic at all, cryptos normally have different speed limits. This is known as the time per block. Some have a speed limit of around eight minutes. Once again, if you need to rush and you are in the supermarket with a queue behind you, waiting some minutes might not be very convenient. So energy has the instant pay feature, which is a few seconds. Now we move on to the fourth feature. Many people care about their privacy. Despite the privacy the blockchain already offers, Energy has the coin mixing feature, an extra layer of privacy. What it does is instead of sending the coins from wallet A to wallet B, the coins get in sort of a pool with other coins and they all get mixed before being redistributed. The amount sent is the exact amount received, but our actual coins sent might have gone to somewhere else and the coins received might come from somewhere else. This obscures the traceability and ensures an extra layer of privacy. Now the fifth feature interests. Some value investors that are long-term players do not benefit from the inflation of some cryptocurrencies. Many investors that are in the long run would like to be compensated for the inflation of the cryptocurrency, even if it's low, which by the way, energy has a perpetual decrease in inflation. Each month the inflation is lower than the past. Now when it comes to compensation, energy rewards long-term investors with interests. Running a masternode. So energy coins can be deposited into a sort of savings account that earns you new coins on a monthly basis, which can have a significant compound effect over time. Now the sixth feature, power consumption. This is a major concern here, and I think this is the biggest concern of them all. Bitcoin consumes at the time of this video more electricity than several countries together. It burns billions of dollars in electricity, and we see this as so unnecessary. If Bitcoin were to replace the whole monetary system and financial markets, it would use more power than the entire world produces. Completely unsustainable, isn't it? I think that as an environmental problem of concerning scale, it's my belief that the trend will look for something greener. There is a global awareness about the importance of being responsible with the resources we have. Projects in alignment with this responsibility, they will greatly benefit from better acceptance and endorsement by the majority. Now energy, it needs a minuscule fraction of power consumption, thanks to its proof of stake feature. Its protocol design is radically different from some other cryptos in regards to power efficiency. Now the seventh feature, what is the seventh feature? So let's get into the heart of the matter. What is unique about energy is its drive towards mass adoption and its strategy to accomplish it. And it's its treasury size, which is 40%. So Tommy Wildpower, along with some computer scientists with extensive background in cryptocurrencies, well, they decided to re-engineer energy cryptocurrency, and this was to benefit from significantly bigger proportion of resources than its predecessors. Now, that's a powerful engine fueled by an ongoing flow of funds that can enable it to scale to a global size organization with everything you can imagine. Its premise was, every $1 invested must at least yield $2 of value in return. Repeatedly, this mechanism triggers a self-reinforcing cycle with an exponential growth potential. A positive feedback loop that increases by orders of magnitude that we cannot even predict. So over the long term, the difference between having its own propulsion or not having it can be astronomical. Not only that, but I think self-sustaining cryptocurrencies are the future, and this is a vital thing that most cryptocurrencies have missed. Now, understanding this spiraling reaction is key to situate energy's presence in the cryptocurrency atmosphere. 
So let's recap that for a second. The genius of this model is that every coin that is issued, in other words, every unit on the supply side, must have attracted at least two units on the demand side, making its projected value extremely interesting, which is the dream of any investor, because the more it grows, the more chances it has to continue growing. Now, make sure you really understand this part because it's decisive. We are talking about profound value proposition here. So Tommy published a video sharing his thoughts with his community and logically, it triggered a lot of excitement and the rest is history. So in summary, these are the most relevant reasons why energy is my personal favorite cryptocurrency and why I think it will rise to a top position. It fulfills all the aspects that I consider most important. It's technical, it's creative, it's leadership and ideological elements are all aligned in the same direction. And these are the ingredients for a champion spot result. And I think time will prove me correct. Now, as I'm recording this, I'm a bit worried that this is beginning to sound like a sales pitch. So I want to make something very clear for you guys. This is just my opinion, but you should not focus on my opinion, rather analyze the reasoning behind it. Cause it makes sense to me, but what it needs is to make sense to you. Now, I'll tell you how I approach this type of investment in the next episode about risks and security measures to take before getting started. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And if so, please give this video a thumbs up as its support is really appreciated. Okay, so I'll see you in the next episode with more information.